Let's pray. Father, as we come to your word, we ask you, Lord Jesus, to make it come alive in us, because Jesus, you are the living word. Let your word come alive in us today, King Jesus. And we thank you for worship this morning, so full of truth and clarity. And as we worship you, Lord, we are set free. And we pray, Lord God, for more of your freedom in days to come. So anoint this word now as we look at your word, the scriptures. Give us open ears, open eyes, open minds and open hearts to receive it like a seed and to let it go and let it grow and let it bear fruit within us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Great to see you here today. Okie doke. So for the last few weeks, we've been looking at uh, a shift which is happening. And, um, and for us, that means Sandy Hill in faith together. As you know, I did choose the other one, Sandy Hill in full throttle. But that would be scary, wouldn't it? So let's go at the same speed. And I am a rev. Anyway, uh, Sandy, Sandy Hill in faith together. And, you know, that's really important isn't it to belong to the body because you belong to the body amen you're not on your own amen Amen. isn't that good isn't that good so we're together and so for the last couple of weeks we've been looking at uh, Romans 10 Uh, the word is in you is in your lips on your lips and in your heart and faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of God Uh, but how can they hear unless somebody tells them and how can they tell them if you're not sent. And we said, Sandy Hill is a sending church. We're sending you back to Israel. Ready? There you go. <laughs> sending you back. We're sending you back. It's wonderful. It's when the church holds on to people and doesn't let them be free. That's when it's a dangerous place. But the church, the idea is for us to go out and make disciples. Amen? And then we come in and bring those disciples into the church to be, to, to, to be disciples and to see new churches. That's why we've got to go out there and preach the gospel. I've said this so many times. If we go out there and just do worship and prayer, we're going to attract Christians. Usually from other churches. And we think, oh, the Lord's working over here. But no, actually, we're taking somebody from over there. But when we go out and plant the gospel, when we go out and plant Jesus, what happens is you get souls and people will get saved. Then you have enough people to start to do. And then out of those could even be new churches and things. Remember, people got saved first and then in Acts chapter 2. There's a little community. Then people got saved and they preached the gospel. And 3,000 were added in one day. 3,000 were added in one day. Okay, uh, wakey, wakey. 3,000 added. Think about that. We're going to need all the chairs. <laughs> And a marquee. Actually, we just go to Tish Hall. That's not going to be big enough. Oh, we go to Milford. Football stadium. We ain't got a football stadium. We've got a football... Fo- Josh, we need to build a football stadium. Okay, it's your job. Okay. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Stadiums. Wonderful. I, every time we go down to Swansea, I'm not a Swansea City fan, although I love Swansea. I'm not a Cardiff fan either. I'm Aston Villa. There you go. And uh, every time I pass uh, Swansea Stadium, it's the Liberty Stadium, isn't it? I go, liberty, yes, God, fill it with your praises. No, liberty, freedom, the sound of freedom, absolutely. We need liberty and freedom. You see, how can they tell people the gospel if people can't hear the gospel because they're not telling them? And how can they tell if people aren't sent? And we looked at our feet and said, we've got beautiful feet because beautiful are the feet of those out who bring good news. Okay, and on Wednesday night we've been looking at considering the power of our testimony from Romans 1 about being ready to share the gospel and not ashamed of the gospel. But this week we're going to be looking at an example of scripture from uh, John chapter 9 which um, Robin read for us. And it is the power of Jesus' miracle and in the life of a blind man. So if you've got a church Bible, uh, it's, it's John chapter John chapter 9. And in it, we're going to see that, well, we can learn so much from this. You see, there's a lot of evidence that Jesus does miracles in this, which led to an encounter 
which led to restoration, which led to a relationship with Jesus. And I know it. It gives us some information here, which hopefully will give us some transformation. So let's just go from the beginning. And um, <laughs> this is pretty good, actually, John, start from the beginning. So, uh, yeah, so John chapter 9. Now, Jesus was passing by um, previously in John chapter 8, right at the end there. He was just about to be stoned. <coughs> Jesus upset the religious system <coughs> of the time. Remember? A lot about truth today, isn't there? A lot about truth. He was speaking the truth. The truth will set you free. The truth might also offend. Yes. Right? The truth offends. The truth offends. So, it, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. But in John eight fifty nine, they took up some stones to throw at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. It's like a holy cloaking device. Remember the Star Trek? Put on the cloaking device. And you, you, the enemy cannot see you. But Jesus, he, he, he hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them and passing by. You see, they were ready to throw their stones at him while they were passing by. But as he was passing by, he saw a man born blind. The Pharisees, the people of the day, couldn't see the man born blind. They're more concerned of being threatened by this Jesus fellow. They're more important, more concerned with stoning him and trying to catch him out than it was actually to reach this man. Even as he hid himself and passed by, he sees the blind man and he, he notices him. He notices him. See, even when we think bad things are happening, and thank God we don't have stones thrown at us. Through at us. Right. Thrown. <laughs> I did go to Cardiff Baptist College and they did correct my grammar in my essays. <laughs> we might not have stones thrown at us, but sometimes the enemy can throw a lot at us. And usually it's muck, and usually it's rubbish, and stuff around our minds, and sometimes the enemy might use somebody else to have a go at you. You might feel intimidated because there's somebody there, you know, like yesterday there was somebody that didn't talk to us. And it's just like, well, it's their problem. <laughs> it's their problem. But there you go. And it's like, don't worry about that, because the enemy will throw stuff at you. But just because the enemy throws stuff at you, God can still work in the midst of the mess. God is still at work in the midst of the mess. So even as Jesus was, you know, going through this crowd, Jesus passed by John 9 verse 1. He saw the man who was blind from birth and his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned that this man or his parents that he was born blind? The disciples really need to know better. Right? Instead of reaching out grace and sovereign mercy to the blind man, they said, oh, Rabbi. It must be sin why he's blind. I mean, he's dealing with the, the, the religious people who are trying to stone him, okay? He sees the blind man, and all the disciples can think about, oh, that's us try and think, it must be sin in the generational line. It must be something wrong with this person. And Jesus is saying, okay, not now, guys. It's not time for a theological debate, or even though that's good sometimes to get to the roots of things. He said, I'm more concerned that this guy is in need. They're throwing stones at us. We're moving through. And all you can do is have a theological debate. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who, who sinned that this, this man or his parents that he was born blind? And Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. Hallelujah. Sometimes it's not time to debate. Sometimes it's just time to deliver. You see, it's not time just to talk about it. We've actually got to walk in it. Not just to talk about it, but walk it out. Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He's leaving that there. He's parking that there. And he says, but he, he is like that because the works of God would be revealed in him right at that time. Verse 4. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Jesus came to reveal the Father. Jesus came to work the works. Jesus came to reverse the curse. And we can do the same. To work the works. That's in our job description. To work the works of God. 
to be available to him to notice people to work the works of God so people's eyes can be opened I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day because the night is coming when no one can when no one can work what's Jesus saying there while it is day he's saying basically not just natural day he's saying in this time in my messianic ministry it's day but a time is coming it's going to be night in other words he's probably talking about his crucifixion the night that Jesus is going to go through the night that he is going to go through as long as I am the I am in the world he says I am the light of the world so here's this picture the disciples want a theological debate and Jesus is more important just deliver this guy let's heal Let, let's touch this guy I want to work the works of God and reveal the Father and that's our job too to see where God is working to see what he is doing to spend time with Father God in prayer and say where do you want me to work today what are you doing today where are you working today Lord and join him in that work and in verse 6 it says when he said these things now here's where fence really gets going when he had said these things he spat on the ground and made clay with his saliva and anointed his eyes of the blind man with the clay okay no nice smelly anointing oil from jerusalem all right no nice respectful prayer <laughs> Ding. Ding. gross isn't it i mean a minute ago they were throwing stones at him now he's playing mud pies in the sand you ever done that as a kid sat in the dirt just playing with the mud <laughs> here is jesus the son of god playing with the mud <laughs> making clay and it's the sabbath you can't knead on the sabbath yeah you see yeah then what do you do put it on the man's eyes good job he was blind he didn't know what was coming <laughs> must have been funny it must, no wonder they thought Jesus was a madman I was going to say get some mud and no we'll go um, everybody else thinking what have you done look, 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 look what he's done making mud pies and putting it on his eyes he's anointing his eyes with mud and he said to him go wash in the pool of Siloam by the way so Siloam is meant means sent he was sent to the place that means sent because he's coming back with a miracle so off goes the blind man with mud on his eyes going down to the place to wash which is interesting because in two kings you see the story of Naaman and the man of God told him he had a skin disease and he needed to be healed and he says go and wash in the Jordan and go and dip in it seven times and Naaman was full of pride and says oh, do you not know who I am I don't want to do that but he ended up giving in and going down to the river and dipping and washing and he came up healed all right so the Pharisees and that should really know about the history so they would have got these things but no so the blind man <laughs> verse 7 and he said to him go wash in the pool of Silo, 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 Siloam which is translated sent so he went and he washed and he came back seeing I was going to say wash and go well it was really wasn't it <laughs> Watch your go, Dave. I know. Uh, washing it went, isn't it? That's what happened. He washed. It went, and it could see. <sighs> A blind man from birth. It doesn't say how old he was. 
Jesus notices him as he's in a rush. Has mud pies put on his eyes. Goes to the place that was sent and he went. <laughs> he takes a dip and he comes up quick. <laughs> and is healed and a miracle is revealed. <laughs> he came back. It's a thing when you're sent, you come back. As you're sent to preach the gospel, you come back with souls. If you obey, if you obey the Lord, there's always a coming back. This is for somebody today. You feel like you've gone too far, but God's saying come back. You may have once believed, but maybe some stuff in your life has happened. You've been blinded spiritually. He's sending you and he's bringing you back. He says, let that stuff be washed off. No mud pies, okay? No mud pies, but in his beautiful grace. Doesn't embarrass anybody. All you've got to do is reach out to him and say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. <laughs> he came back seeing. Therefore, the neighbours and those who previously had seen that he was blind said, is not the one, is this not the one who sat and begged? Some said, this is he. Others said, no, nah, it must be somebody like him. So there's always going to be doubt and unbelief. Don't let those with doubt and unbelief sink your boat of faith. Don't let the naysayers get you down. Just smile and carry on. Just, you just believe what you believe. Right? Don't let them get you down. Therefore they said to him, How were your eyes opened? He answered them and said, Well, a man called Jesus made the clay he stuck it on my eyes anointed my eyes and said to me go and wash in the pool of siolum verse 11 and wash so i went and i washed and i received my sight <laughs> then they said to him verse 12 where is he and he says i do not know you do not know he hadn't yet seen him because he was blind wasn't he so how can he know where he is? Is he looking around? <laughs> the answer's in the text. <laughs> the clue is in the text. He's looking around, he doesn't know where he is because he never saw him, he heard his voice. <laughs> I love this story. Then we have the Pharisees, okay? Even though the blind man is testifying, says, I was blind but now I see. <laughs> he gets taken before the Pharisees and it was the Sabbath and it says in verse 14 now it was the Sabbath when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes now you would have thought people who knew God would be very happy that a blind man's been healed right no all they could say instead of being instead of being so excited and pleased and praising God because of the miracle they get offended because he made mud pies because he made clay. Why? Because it's the Sabbath. You can't do any work on the Sabbath, including taking a bit of mud, spitting in it, and making it into a nice mixture. You can't do that on the Sabbath. They missed God completely. They missed the point completely. Woe unto us if we get offended because God does something which perhaps didn't fit into my criteria or our way of doing things because God used somebody else. Yes, somebody else. He didn't use you or me on that occasion. He chose somebody else. We get them. I've been praying for that for years. Be happy. Don't get offended over mud pies. Don't lose your faith over a mud pie. Jesus made the clay, he said, and he opened my eyes. Then the Pharisees, verse 15, asked him again, how he had received his sight. The poor guy is questioned. It's like, you know, they're the police. Yeah, they're the police. They keep questioning him. Where was you at this time? Who did the what? <laughs> and he told him again, he put clay on my eyes and I washed and I see. There he is again testifying. I don't know kind of what happened. I'm not even sure who it was, but I knew it was Jesus. I was blind, but now I, I see. 
See, that is the power of testimony. And people sometimes will ask you again, so what really happened? You just keep telling your story. No matter what happens, even if they throw stones, you keep telling your story. Verse 16. They still couldn't see it. Therefore, some of the Pharisees said, this man can't be from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. Mud pies. Others said, how can a man who is a sinner do such signs? And there was a division among them. Often the truth would divide. And verse 17. Then they said to the blind man again, oh, give over. And they didn't say give over, but give him, a, give him a break. Then they said to the blind man again, what do you say about him? Because he opened your eyes. And the blind man who can now see said, well, he is a prophet. But the Jews, verse 18, did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight. They would rather believe, beloved, listen, they would rather believe he wasn't blind at all than to believe that he was blind and now he sees. We think of the media today. When we think of the false things and we think of the, sorry, fake news, they just will like, they rather believe something, you know, and discount something and believe some lie than to actually realise the truth. They didn't even believe he was born blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him who received his sight. Now, I'm not sure how old he was, but it's a bit thing, isn't it? I'm going to call your mum and dad. It's like being at school, right? I'm going to tell your parents. Time to bring your parents in. You've been naughty. Naughty boy, you get your parents. So they asked his parents, saying, Is this your son? Is this your son who you say was born, who you say was born blind? Well, how then, how then does he see? Well, his parents answered him in verse 20 and said, We know that this is our son. We know he was born blind. By what, what, by what means he now sees, we do not know. Or who opened his eyes, we do not know. He is, of the, he is of age, ask him, and he will speak to himself. Now, they were Jews, they were Jewish, and they were passing the buck a little bit there, which is a shame. Mm, they were afraid of the Pharisees. Verse 22, it says here, his parents said these things because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had agreed already that if anyone confessed that he was the Christ, they would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, he is of age, ask him. Note to parents, do not do that, okay? <laughs> do not do that. So, verse 28, so they called the man again and said to him, right, give God the glory, we know that this Jesus man is a sinner. Then he testifies again in verse 25. He said this, Whether he is a sinner or not, I do not know. But one thing I know, that though I was blind, now I see. The truth will speak for itself. Even the one thing, I don't know, but one thing I do know. And that's what you must do with your testimony. You don't have to explain the ins and outs of everything. Okay, you can say, well, one thing I know is I was like this. Jesus came, he changed my life, and this is what I was like now. And people can't, you know, people who knew me back then go, what happened to him? Oh, he found Jesus, didn't he? That's your testimony. You stick to it. And this man, though, he was questioned by the miracle police. He, 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 he stood in the truth. Even his parents kind of we're more concerned about being chucked out. One thing I know, that though I was blind, now I see. Then they said to him again, what did he do to you? And how did he open your eyes? I know you're getting really tired with the story now because it goes on and on, doesn't it? And he answered them, I told you already, and you did not listen. Now he's got his vavavoom back, isn't he? Now he's like, he's getting it back. He says, right then, you want to fight? Come on then. My dad's bigger than your dad. <laughs> My dad is bigger than your dad. 
I told you already and you did not listen. Why did you want to hear it again? And he says, do you want to become his disciples as well? <laughs> do you, you want to believe, you want to be his disciples as well? Now he's preaching the gospel. See, adversity is created in that, ooh, that tenacity. You see, you see, that struggle will create that resilience in you. Just say, do you know what? I'm going to give them the gospel anyway. Because they're really on my wick. I'm going to give them the gospel. That's the power of the testimony. You keep telling it. And you keep telling it. They might not listen. They might ask you again. Then one day, you'll get to them say, they will say, tell us again. And then you'll say, okay, you, you want to follow him as well? Do you want to follow him as well? That didn't go down too well because they reviled him in verse 28. He said, well, you're his disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. And we know that God spoke to Moses as for this fellow, we don't know where he is from. And then the man answered and said to them, why? This is a marvelous thing that you do not know where he is from. Yet he opened my eyes. You don't even know where this guy is from. But this, he opened my eyes. Like we began the service, it's a marvellous thing. How marvellous. How wonderful. How marvellous. Don't get over the marvel of it. The magnitude, the mystery, the majesty of God. He is amazing. But the outcome for him is this. Let's jump to verse 34. They answered him and said to him, while well, you're completely born in sins and you are teaching us and they cast him out. It's one thing. If there's a disagreement in a Christian church, you might say, oh, I've got to find another church then. But the Judaism, you get chucked out, you're chucked out. No going back. That's it. You're chucked out. They cast him out. Verse 35, Jesus heard they had cast him out. See, a wonderful thing happened in the blind man who now sees life. He's told his testimony. He's even then telling those who don't like him all about the gospel. Now he's being cast out and his parents are still in because they weren't big enough to defend him. Jesus sees him. He is now rejected. He now feels unaccepted by a man. Jesus sees him. What are we saying about today? I hadn't seen this until now. This is the Holy Spirit. Jesus sees him. He comes to him. Jesus sees you. He's with you when it's going great and the miracles are there. He's with you when they're questioning you. He's with you when they're doubting you. He is with you when they chuck you out. He's with you every season of the soul, even in monsoon season, like yesterday. It was like a monsoon, wasn't it? Jesus heard that he had cast him out, that they had cast him out. And when he had found him, when Jesus had found him, he said to him, Do you believe in the Son of God? And that he said to him, Well, who is he, Lord, that I may believe in him? And Jesus said to him, You have both seen him, and it is he who is talking with you. Then he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Evidence, encounter, restoration. Jesus revealed in a relationship with Jesus you have now seen him the very one who opened his eyes oh, yes his response is to fall on his knees and worship him I believe the Pharisees didn't do that nobody else did that in that moment but he did and he gives God the glory and that is why we must share our testimonies 
That's why we must preach the gospel. That somebody who is spiritually minded will see Jesus, that they too will fall on their knees and worship him. Worship him. So we need to come back seeing. If you've been through it, if you've been through the mud, if you've been through the mire, Jesus says, come back. Let me wash you down. <laughs> Let me heal you. Let me set you free. Let me reignite you. And I'm going to send you out. Interesting thing is where John places this miracle is obviously right before John 10 where Jesus then starts talking about the sheepfold, about the shepherd laying down his life with the sheep and reaching those lost. So when we read John 10, never ever forget that John 10 is planted there because of what just happened in John 9. Don't take a, I oh, you know what I'm going to say, don't take a scripture out of context because you have a text, but you're left with a con, yeah? Con thing, yeah? So when you read John 10 and say, you have come that I might have life, I might live it to a more abundantly, we were talking about the blind man who'd just been kicked out because he went there and found him. You see, it's not enough that people get saved. It's not enough that they get discipled. We've got to go and find them look after them and bring them back in and go out and find them and bring them back in you see it's not a drive-by shooting Jesus, 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 Jesus. yeah we're receiving, we're receiving, you never see him again no drive-bys Jesus passed by oh thank you Lord no drive-bys, Jesus passed by saw him spent time with him did this miracle, sent him on his way, he comes back, booed out the synagogue, goes and finds him, and has a pastoral chat. So how is it going? How does it feel about that? Well, he never guessed what they did to me. <laughs> I can believe it. Share your testimony, because we too can reveal the Father because of Jesus. We too can work the works because of Jesus. We too can reverse the curse because of Jesus. And we too can open the eyes of the spiritually blind because of Jesus. And all he needs is somebody who's willing and somebody to say, yes, that's me. Is that you today? Let's stand. God, we mean it. We really do mean it. And we just thank you for the power of testimony. We thank you for that story. We thank you, Lord, how it sets the scene for John 10, that you have come that we might have life. We thank you, Lord, that you, even, Lord, when you were having a hard time, where those were throwing stones, Lord, you had time to speak to a blind man. And I just pray that no matter what happens in this life, upon this earth, or in our circumstances, help us to know, God, that we can be ready to share the gospel. That we don't have to be ashamed of the gospel, but we can see amazing things. So today we apply your word. Where we've been rejected or hurt, Lord Jesus, today we come to you and we're going to get prayer for our healing today. And we're going to be set free today. And Lord God, help us, Lord, to find those ones who we preach the gospel to. They may or may have not received you as saviour, but Lord, they're still lost if they're not found. Help us, Lord God, not to do a drive-by, but to pass by and spend time with people. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.